I want to thank you for joining us again for another episode of Sermon Highlights here at the Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I'm here with our pastor, Dr. Harold Thomas III. And sir, I want to thank you for coming back and sharing the highlights and main points with us. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Thank you, Elder Noah. Once again, today's sermon was, the title on online was, uh, It Does Not Matter. A little, little audible today and led to more speaking about Expect a Miracle. Um, I took time to talk about how sometimes in our lives there's so many miracles around us that we take for granted, the ability to see, hear, touch, smell, what it takes to get a breath out of our bodies, what it takes for our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our brains to process. God is performing miracles, but there are greater miracles, uh, how God protects us while we travel. Uh, there are things that can happen through the night, but God protects us. Also, I want to move toward the miracle of how God delivered the people of Israel out of slavery. And for miracles to occur, I said that there were two requirements. Number one, in this particular setting of children of Israel coming out of Egypt was number one, was they had to put the blood on the doorpost. They had to follow God's specific directions when he told them to do it, how he told them to do it. And they were willing to take that advice and put the door, put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost. And so because when the death angel passed that night to um, to uh, uh, lay to rest the firstborns, the death angel passed over the homes that had the blood. So I emphasized the point of about people making sure that they keep their lives covered with the blood of Jesus. Make it right with Christ on a daily basis. But also what I wanted to emphasize was the fact that sometimes we take an individual, isolated approach toward the kingdom. And I want to encourage mothers and fathers and children Bring the family in. Keep the family covered in prayer. Keep pray and intercede for our family and pray together as a family. Keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Uh, the next requirement was when the people of Israel left, God led them out. They had to cross the Red Sea. And in crossing the Red Sea, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that it was a baptism. It was like a baptism. And so they had to have the blood and then with the conversion of the blood and then the baptism. And so I drew the analogy that it took the not the analogy, but the fact it took the blood and the baptism. And I was encouraging people not only when you when you convert it with the decision, make the public declaration through baptism. Now, some more points I wanted to bring out from the story is that when they came to the point of the Red Sea, they had Pharaoh behind them, mountains on the left and right, and the sea before them. They were in a tight spot. But if God led them to that point, then God will take them through. The only way they can go to get through was when God told Moses, tell the people to go forward. And sometimes we become stuck in the paralysis of analysis. We always analyze and looking here, looking that I can't do it. Oh, this won't work. That won't work. When God simply saying, I can't work the miracle in your life until you move forward, until you complete the application for the house, the car, the job, the graduate program, or undergraduate. God can't move. He can't do anything until we move forward by faith. And when they move forward by faith, the waters parted and they were able to cross on dry ground. So in your life, if God is leading you, he will take you all the way. Don't allow fear to paralyze you. And I want you to remember this other point, this last point. When we read the story and uh, two more points, when we read the story and Exodus, uh, when we get down, the story is uh, starts like 12, 13, 14. And in 14, some of the last words the uh, Egyptian soldiers said yes. is that they declared that the God of heaven, the Lord, is fighting their battles for them. And that's what it's about. That when we're going through our difficult situations and then when God takes us through, it should be others declaring and seeing the mighty hand of God is not seeing us but seeing God 
work on our behalf and we give all glory and praise to God who works miracles. And in chapter 15 of Exodus, they sang the song of Moses uh, and Miriam wrote the song and they celebrated. And I shared with them the saints in Revelation 15 when the saints of God, we are carried through the time of trouble and we get to the other side of reaching heaven. We're going to stand on the sea of glass and we're going to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. We're going to testify how the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, paid the penalties for our sins, empowered us through his grace to take us through the last days that we may sing forever with him in his kingdom. May God bless you. Stay encouraged. Remember, God is able. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for coming back here and sharing with us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Cool.